Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are playing more modern. Modern Horizons 3 is out, so obviously we've got to be playing all the different decks that we can. So the, the new creature on the block, Nethergoyf. Nethergoyf is Tarmogoyf's like younger brother, I guess you could say. Instead of being everyone's graveyard, it's just your own graveyard. But as a as a upside, you do get the escape cost and you also do get the fact that it's only one mana. So I've been really eager to play with Tarmogoyf. It feels like it wasn't that long ago when, sorry, with Nethergoyf, it feels like it wasn't that long ago that Tarmogoyf was reprinted in, I want to say like Modern Horizons 1. I remember I was at college and these cards were like $150 each and it just felt so unattainable. Um, and now Tarmogoyf is like $10. So uh, crazy world that we live in. Uh, but yeah, absolutely love Tarmogoyf. And the idea to play eight copies of Tarmogoyf sounds really, really fun. Um, so in my list that I've got in front of you, then the idea is basically enable Tarmogoyf and Nethergoyf to be as big as they can by turn like two or three, uh, and just try and play like a more aggressive list. Obviously you can play these in like a mid range deck with as a saga and things like that and Thoughtseize. Uh, but if you're new to this channel, you might not know this. Generally, we try to get things done a little bit quicker around here. So I'm trying to play a more aggressive version of, uh, I guess you could say Jund. Well, yeah, it is Jund. So the easiest way to enable Tarmogoyf and Nethergoyf, first of all, is Mishra's Bauble. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty obvious inclusion. And then it often goes along with Street Wraith as well, because it gives you a creature type in your graveyard. Uh, when you add for Street Wraith to your deck, that does also make Death Shadow a little bit more interesting. So we are playing some of those as well. But other Delirium enablers are two Seal of Fire and two Tar Fire. These are, yes, worse than Lightning Bolt, but they do enable you to get various different types in the graveyard. Seal of Fire gives you access to enchantment in the graveyard a lot sooner than most decks will do. And Tar Fire, the same for Kindred. And then uh, other payoffs that we've got for having Delirium or lots of different card types in your graveyard is Traverse. So Traverse allows you to search for a basic, but if you have Delirium, you can go search for a creature instead. So yeah, being able to find more Tarmogoyfs, find more Nethergoyfs, things like that, really, really sweet. And there are a couple of little uh, tricks we've got in here as well. So one other card I would like to point out is Incubation Incongruity. Incon yeah, Incongruity. Uh, so very, very strange card. And you might be thinking, why on earth would you play this? You're not First of all, you're not even playing blue. I mean, we are, we're playing one Mortuary Grave. But realistically, we're only using the, the Incubation side of this card. Um, incongruity is, is a possibility, but I don't think it's gonna come up very often. But what is powerful about this card is the fact that one half is a sorcery and one half is an instant. So that means in your graveyard, this counts as two card types. So same as Tar Fire. And I just really like the fact that it enables you to get Delirium a lot quicker. It made your time growth and things a lot bigger. And particularly sorcery doesn't tend to be great in this like aggro shell because most sorceries just aren't very aggressive. So that was where I also came up to the conclusion of playing Breakout. So Breakout was another way to get a sorcery into your graveyard, but uh, actually develop your board state as well. So Breakout into to Tarmogoyf and Nethergoyf, you can get some serious beats in very, very quickly. But you can also break out into things like Bronco if you want to get some card advantage, Ragavan again, similar thing. And we've also got some Death Shadow. So if the game goes late and we are very low on life total, well, you can deal a hell of a lot of damage with a Death Shadow out of nowhere. Other than that, we do have a little bit of shenanigans in the deck. The main one being with the Bronco. If you're not familiar with the Bronco, when it attacks, reveal the top card of your library. It goes into your hand, so you draw a card essentially. But uh, you lose life equal to the card that you draw CMC. However, you can saddle it for three. So you just tap creatures that add up for, for three power and your opponent takes that damage instead. So if, as long as you can essentially crew this, then it becomes a very, very big damage dealer and it gives you card advantage. The main thing that we really want to do with this is with the Troll of Kazad. So what this has is Swamp Cycling 1. So you can cycle this for one mana, go get a swamp, out, a swamp out of your deck. That swamp is going to be Witch's Cottage. Witch's Cottage says when it comes into play, if you control three or more other swamps, you may put a creature card from your graveyard onto the top of your library. Well, we're just going to go ahead and put that troll back on top of our deck. And then what that means is Bronco guarantees you six damage from its attack trigger. Um, which in a lot of cases is just going to be enough to kill your opponent when we're curving out so efficiently. So yeah, that is the deck. It's a hell of a lot of fun. It's just got loads of sweet cards. Breakout is awesome. Lightning Bolt is obviously great. Ragavan is awesome. Um, oh, we are also playing a... Ooh, where is it gone? One Awakening uh, because it da deals damage to you. So it's just an upside of that. Uh, moving over to the sideboard. Uh, the Mono Red deck is everywhere. The Storm deck. So we're playing for a uh, Dampening Sphere. This also hits uh, the Tron decks and the Eldrazi decks. So yeah, hits a lot of different things, Dampening Sphere at the moment. 
Uh, three, pick your poison. It's just one of the best answers for enchantments and artifacts and the fact that it hits uh, things like Merc Tides as well. Really, really nice. Uh, oh, and Slick Shot as well. Slick Shot's very popular. The new Nardu deck is absolutely everywhere. If you haven't seen the Nardu deck, check it out. But essentially, Tunnel Ingus uh, means that they can't combo off or they can, but they're going to deal themselves a lot of damage and in most cases kill themselves. This is especially nice in this deck because we have two Traverse, two Incubation, um, and three Breakout. So you're going to see this card a lot in the matchups where you want it. So yeah, Tunnel Ingus, I think it's a really sweet card. I tweeted this very, very early on when the new set came out. Um, so you'd know about this tech a long time ago if you followed me on Twitter. So follow me on Twitter. Um, and to Legion's End, it's kind of just a, a generic good card so we're sticking two of those in it's good against yorgmoth it's good against zoo lots of people have lots of creatures that are really good and most of modern is less than two mana so two of those and two bone crusher it's good against the ring it's good against mid-range grindy grindy decks uh so two bone crusher giant um anyway that is the deck i hope you guys are looking forward to the gameplay because it's going to be a lot of fun uh time of is a sweet card especially when you can do things like break out into it uh, and hopefully we're going to get some nice 10 10 death shadows or some like 5 6 or 6 7 tarmogoyfs uh, stay tuned and uh, if you want to see more content make sure to subscribe because there is tons more content coming down the line thanks for watching guys let's get into the gameplay all right what do we got one land hand uh on the draw we've got a ragavan we've got another goyf i think we're going to keep this there are a lot of good draws that we can have uh, and the Ragavan, if it connects, obviously, that's going to help out a lot. Scolding time to begin with. Doesn't really narrow it down for us. Uh, let's go ahead and shock. And let's just run Ragavan out there. This Nethergoyf is going to get pretty big if they kill the Ragavan. We can tar fire, so that's one, two, three. Uh, you know, I guess if we draw a fetch, that'd be four. Uh, we've got a sorcery. Oh, they've actually changed our modo now, so it says Kindred Instant. It used to say Tribal, but um, they changed it to Kindred. I'm unsure why, but makes no difference, I guess. They said about it in my pre-release, which I um, I hadn't heard of when they said that it had been changed. Are we against Mono Red Storm? It looks like we are. If that's the case, our site... Oh, what on earth? We are not against Mono Red Storm. Why would you play this in... I guess one is kind of free. Interesting. Okay, that's that's a fine draw. At least now we have a land. So what are we wanting to cast? Probably the Nethergoyf or the Tarmogoyf. Uh, we can... I guess we swing first and see what we find. But it's very likely our opponent is just going to combo off next turn. Uh, so we're really going to appreciate our sideboard in this matchup. Dampening Sphere is going to make this uh, much closer. We'll hit a mountain. Okay. So yeah, let's go ahead and Swamp Cycle this troll. Uh, I guess we got Overgrown Tomb this time. Yeah. We'll pay the two. And what do we want to play? I guess we save breakout for next turn. So let's just go green and play Tamagoyf. Kind of tempted was, uh, yeah, I was kind of tempted just to play Nethergoyf and bolt our opponent and just try and get them dead a little bit quicker. But I don't think it's going to be that much quicker. And I, it looks like we don't even have time. This Mono Red Storm deck is very, very powerful if you don't interact with it. I don't know how well it uh, holds itself up if you do have interaction. I feel like they just try and combo off as best they can. All right, you got lots of mana. We know they have some sort of card advantage card because they already uh, milled over the glimpse. Well, there's the past in flames. So, this should just be game. Because now they can just Reckless Impulse again. Double Manamorphose. Oh yeah, they've got it. 
we'll let we'll let them do their thing. Uh, at least that way you guys can see also how the deck works if you're not familiar with this new storm deck. Uh, playing the new Rao as well. I guess that would have been a good thing to keep up. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell during your turn, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, uh, Rao does one damage to you. If you win the flip, you might exile Rao and flip him. But he also is just a spell reducer. He costs your he makes your instants and sorceries cost one less. And then on the plus side, you can tick him up to do the same thing. Yeah, opponent is well and truly going off here. They killed off their Rao straight away. Huh. They're still going. They're, <laughs> they're up to 11 mana. I don't see how they can fizzle at this point, but... I assume their win condition is going to be Grape Shot. There we go. All right. Well played, opponent. You got us. So on to sideboarding. Uh, we have very specific cards for this matchup. Predominantly Dampening Sphere. Uh, do we want Pick Your Poison as well, just to name Artifact? That might just be worth it. So what do we not want in this matchup? I guess if we're playing Dampening Sphere, you don't want Bauble. I guess we just play the Bauble first. Crocs is probably a little bit too slow. And Bolt is the least interactive uh, removal spell we have. I Not interactive, sorry. It just doesn't pump Argoifs and Nethergoifs. So I think we'd rather these. These still kill the, uh, the Rao, right? So you might as well just play those ones. And one more cut. Mm. Is Death Shadow good enough in this matchup? I guess we've got the Bronco, so that should help. So two more cuts, I guess. We kind of want to play at least one Pick Your Poison, I think. Yeah, I think one is fine. Um... Incubation is just a bit slow, and our creature count has gone down. In fact, if we're going to cut that, we might as well just cut the Traverse. Because Incubation counts for two, uh, two spell types, right? So we definitely need to go first. Thoughtseize would have also be another good card to have in our deck. Um, but I think, I think uh, the Dampening Spheres should be good enough if we can find them. Um... This hand is fine. We don't we can't play our Death Shadow very early, can we? We can deal three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's like a turn two. It doesn't really work with what we want to do. I think we're gonna mulligan because the upside of finding dampening sphere is just so good. Still no dampening sphere, but we do have a Ragavan and a Tar Fire. Sure. We'll go ahead and keep. And let's just lead off with a Ragavan. This is one of the matchups where your Ragavan is quite likely to survive. They don't tend to play a lot of interaction. They're just doing their own thing and we just have to hope that we can stop them before they get too far. Okay, so we've got the Witch's Cottage and the Troll and that. So if we find a Bronco, we could do a fair bit of damage. So let's go fetch shock. Uh, Overgrown tomb is fine. We're shocking regardless if we use the mana or not because we want to get the death shadow online. Uh, I think we just want to swing first, see what happens. A Maya. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we could tar fire there and then play the death shadow, but that seems a little bit over the top when we'd rather use this on a creature. I think that's going to be a lot more impactful. There's the ruby medallion. Yeah, maybe the pick your poison is well worth bringing in. Uh, 
Uh, does it really matter what we go for here? Probably not. We'll just go for a Blood Crypt. Okay, another Bloodstone Maya is not ideal. Uh, let's go ahead and fetch Shock. We're only playing like 18 or 16 lands or something. Uh, Overgrown Tomb is fine. And yeah, I guess we just crack in. Oh, that could be fun. Except the top three cards of your library, you may play... Uh, oh, those cards. It's not even just one. At the beginning of your next end step, any of those cards get exiled. Put them into your graveyard and then make zero ones. Huh. Okay, let's try that. Maybe we'll find some interaction. Maybe a dampening sphere. <laughs> no, but we do find a lot of power. Tamagoyf, Tamagoyf, and a Ragavan. Uh, a zero one is not ideal at the moment. Why does it say it's a zero one? Oh, because it's not in play? I swear these cards do have their power and toughness, regardless of where they are. There's land, creature, sorcery. Then we could go instant tribal, or instant kindred. Yeah, I think that's the best bet. It's that or uh, Death Shadow. Death Shadow is next time we can go down to nine. I think we're just better off with Tarmogoyf. Uh, yeah, we'll just pass the turn. Oh, we get two Saprolings. Oh, gas. <laughs> Those are not doing anything. Are they just going to go off? Maybe we do just have to mulligan for Dampening Sphere? Because this just seems absurd. I'm trying to think if there's any other good ways to hate on our opponent. There is a, there's a two drop in, I think it's in Standard. It's definitely in Pioneer because someone played against me the other day, uh, yesterday. It's, uh, I think it's two mana for a 1-4. And then whenever a player plays a instant or sorcery, deal one damage to them for each other one that they've played as well. So as they storm off, they just die. In fact, you can then get it off breakout. Oh, maybe that would be better than dampening sphere. I guess it's only in this matchup that's better. In any other situation, you'd rather have dampening sphere because it works against Tron and Eldrazi lands. Yeah. All right, opponent. You do your thing. So I think uh, this mono red deck, you're going to have to have a lot of hate for. But the thing is, if you do have enough hate for it, I feel like the deck is just dead. It's, it feels like the old affinity decks um, back in like 2013, where the affinity deck was just like the best deck you could be doing until your opponent has any sort of hate and then it gets shut down quite a lot. Like everyone used to have two ancient grudge, a stony silence, two stony silence uh shattering spree in their sideboard just because the affinity deck was so strong and then if you had if you drew your hate the deck was just not really that good so maybe this mono red deck is the same it's just very linear and very powerful but quite flimsy the reason i didn't want to bring in the pick your poison is because i feel like they can just sandbag the ruby Because if you think your opponent's going to have... Oh, are they running out of... Ri oh, they're nowhere near running out of rituals. All right. Okay, our opponent got us. Not even close. Uh, yeah, mulligan until you find sideboard hate, I guess, is the, <laughs> is the answer. All right, round two. What do we got? Yeah, this hand looks fine. We'll go ahead and keep. There's a lot going on here. No one drop, but uh, we've got some time ago. So we've got uh, a lot of permanents to get into the graveyard. Creature, artifacts, and land. Opponent leads off with a Tamiyo. So they're probably Merktide. Uh, sorry, not Merk. Yeah, Merktide. <laughs> There's the Bronco to combo with the Troll. Uh, let's go Bauble first. And we're going to try and find a removal spell here. 
that is removal. So we'll go ahead and cycle, shock here. We'll cast the seal of fire. Wait, it's a zero three? Oh, okay. Well, I guess we won't kill it. I mean, we would still play this regardless. I just didn't realize this was a 0-3. I thought it was a 1-2. So it doesn't even deal damage. It just draws you cards. Well, investigates, which is pretty close to drawing you cards. Opponent plays a Prismatic Vista, so maybe it's not Merktide. Okay, really not sure what our opponent is up to over there. Um, let's just go get a green source. And it's like, do we want to play Bronco or Tamagoyf? I think we want to play Tamagoyf, but I'm not sure. So we can do the Bronco shenanigans, but not this turn. Sorry, not the next turn because we don't have enough lands. Let's just play a Tamagoyf. How bad can playing a Tamagoyf really be? And uh, we can pump it straight away with the Seal of Fire if we want to. Yeah, pass them back to our opponent. The Tamiyo is gaining them advantages with these clue tokens, but uh, it's quite mana intensive to crack them, so not too concerned about that. So maybe they are Merktide? I didn't know Merktide would play Prismatic Vista. Very confused at what our opponent is up to. But it's it's a new format, right? Uh, well, it's, Modern is essentially a new format with this new Modern Horizons 3. So there are... Yep, no idea. Return target wizard you control to its owner's hand. And sure enough, Tamiyo is a wizard. What else is a wizard? Snapcaster Mage. Um... Tidebinder Mage, I believe, is a wizard. Yeah, those are the ones that stand out to me. This is such a sweet land. Return target wizard you control to its owner's hand. That's so sweet. It is a bit dodgy on the mana base to play a colorless land. So they must be pretty heavy in the wizards for that to be worth it. Because a colorless land when you play um like removal spells plus probably cantrips, a colorless land is quite taxing. Otherwise everyone would just stick a mute vault in their deck if it didn't matter, right? But it does. Opponent is in the tank. I'm not really sure what what they could be thinking about doing. Uh, we're kind of they just like could have anything in modern at this point. They don't seem to be in a hurry to flip Tamio, so it might just be a a value engine. What does it even do on the other side? Until your next turn, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control gets minus one minus zero. Okay, so that's like an old school Jace ability to tick up. Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. If it's green, add one of any color mana. That's pretty nice. And then minus seven, draw cards equal to half the number of cards you have in your library. And you get an emblem with uh, Reliquary Tower, so you, you can have unlimited hand size. Wow, that minus is really good at the end, but obviously seven is a lot to get up to. All right, opponent's getting that clue again. That's fine. Sure glad this doesn't have power because uh, <laughs> we would uh, have taken quite a bit of damage from it. Okay, there's the Bloodstained Mire that we need. So the following turn we can Witch's Cottage. So this turn I do want to get the Bronco in play. Um, so first of all, let's just get in, get in the red zone. Ooh, 
We're not going to crack the seal of fire just yet in case they try and flash in like a Tidebinder Mage or something later. Um, I think we're just going to go Bloodstained Mire. And we're going to play the Bronco. Try and get that 7 damage in from its trigger next turn. That would be really sweet. That might be a bit optimistic as we know that they're a Wizards deck. So they could very easily be um, playing Tristana's Tidebinder. So if that's the case... Tamagosh would be a safer bet. But uh, yeah, the idea of just being able to one-shot your opponent is so sweet. Wow, they really don't like our Bronco. Deal five damage to it. Uh, if you draw Controller Wizard, you can do two. So they're also choosing to draw two cards. Yeah, sure. We can always get that back because we've got the Witch's Cottage if we want to. Buy a bluff canal. I think Flame of Anor is like one of the biggest drawing points to playing Wizards. This card is so good. Rhinos used to play it just on the off chance that you could use your Muta Vault and things. Draw two and kill something. Very, very powerful. And the fact they have main deck answers to artifacts is incredibly good with the Ruby deck, the Mono Red Storm deck going everywhere. Just having it as an option, really, really nice. Uh, we can go ahead and fetch shock here. Again, we just want to go go on life, go down on life totals, uh, because we do have death shadow in our deck. I guess we could have cycled as well, but we're not in any hurry to do that. Oh, breakout! That could be sweet. What could we find that's better than a, a four five tamagoyf though? I mean, the creature's gonna have haste, so. Yeah, let's see what we get. Could be fun. Uh, just a Rakavan or a Street Wraith or a Croxa. Croxa seems a little bit too slow, but to be fair, we are almost bringing it back. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for Croxer. So Croxer comes in, triggers happen. It doesn't matter which order this happens, I don't think. It's a shame it does die now instead of end of turn. Oh, that would have been sweet if we could swing with it. They discard Tune the Narrative. So they've got a bit of energy going on as well. Is there anything their deck can't do? By the by the look of it, Answer a Tamagoyf. <laughs> a 5-6, so it's out of Flame of Anor as well now. Um, turn 4, so we can play the Witch's Cottage. So first of all, we want a Swamp Cycle, I think. Go get a Blood Crypt. So we can actually cast our Croxer. And is there anything we want to go on top? I kind of just want this Bronco. Because this is going to be a grindy game, right? So if the game is grindy, you want the card, card advantage if you can. So we've got Croxer in the graveyard for value. And then we've got the Bronco to draw more cards. And we've also got two mana five sixes, which can go up even more. Because I, I still don't think there's an enchantment in the bin. But I like having the Seal of Fire because if they have a a wizard um, like uh, Tristana's Tidebinder, just Seal of Fire killing it, it's very good. Especially when they've got the laboratory. I don't want them to keep countering things and then bouncing it. It's a lot of shenanigans. And we would have got in like, what, an extra two damage, which is very negligible at this point. Opponent's got a full grip, seven cards in hand, so <laughs> they have got plenty to do. It's just, what are they doing with all this, all these cards? A lot of card draw. I 
Are they going to try and flip Tamio at some point? Bring back Flame is pretty nice. They just oh, they're going to combat. Okay, sure. They don't attack. Why would you not attack? That's strange. Uh, well, we might as well shock because we've got plenty. Oh, actually, no, we didn't need to shock. That's fine. We're just making our death shadows bigger, right? <laughs> um, let's just start by getting in the red zone. Swing for five. Okay, so they're just going to block here. I assume they have another one. They've drawn so many cards. Uh, and then let's go... You know what? I think if we just play a bunch of Tarmogoyfs, they probably just can't answer them all. Unless they have Dress Down. If they have Dress Down, <laughs> that would be pretty good. Subtlety. They pitched for subtlety as well. So they're choosing deliberately not to tap out to play the subtlety. Very bizarre. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll draw another Tarmogoyf. I don't know why they would do that instead of... Why would you evoke it? They must have something really good to play here. Very confused by that. Oh, they just wanted to keep up Counterspell as well. Okay, that's fine. So they're going to crack their clue end of turn. Go back up to five. Yep. Five cards in hand. And they're about to go up to six as well. Because they're going to draw for turn. So our opponent is really far away from running out of gas. But, I mean, we've got plenty of good threats to go. We've got the Croxa, uh, Bronco, and the Tamagoyf. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't really work against us because we have a Seal of Fire in play. So, yeah, that, that's fine. Seal of Fire completely saved us this game already. I guess if they have a Tristana's Tide Binder. Okay, now they can't cast it, so we're going to straight away pop this off. So that's another wizard that they're playing. And they also chose to tap so they couldn't bounce this. I guess they would have needed one more mana. Oh my god, I can't believe how good Seal of Fire was just there. Completely saved us from probably one of our biggest weaknesses. Uh, opponent's only got two mana up and that's not counter spell. So... To start with, we'll just attack with our 6-7. Two mana 6-7, seems fair, right? And I really want to get this Croxer in play, but I think it's better just to play all of our two drops. Uh, mainly because then they can't counter all of them, right? How many Tarmogoyfs is too many Tarmogoyfs opponent? And then next turn we can bring back the Croxer. They might take three from the Croxer, and then even if they don't, we can just crew the Bronco. And then Bronco could hit them for a load of damage anyway. We've got we've got loads of uh, different avenues to kill our opponent. The fact that our creatures don't die to flame is is wild. Yeah, you can kill the Bronco, that's fine. But like our, <laughs> our Tamagotchi just do not care. Oh, that's the combo. Okay, sure. So a Tamiyo plus a Flame of Anor just flips it straight away because you draw off a turn and then Tamiyo triggers it so that you uh, can, can draw two from your... I guess it doesn't trigger, it just enables your Flame of Anor to draw two cards. Very fancy. And then they've ticked up so that our creatures get minus one, minus O. Oh. They are both still lethal, so that does not matter. Until your next turn, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, it gets minus one, minus zero. Well, six down to five makes 
zero difference to us. And we've got the Crocs are coming back as well. We're going to attack first because we don't want to ruin our Tarmogoyf count, um, card type count with um, getting rid of a bunch of cards. Are they going to Cryptic Command here? I have a, a strong feeling there's a Cryptic Command coming. We'll find out. So we're going to attack. Oh, they don't have a Cryptic Command. What could they possibly have? I, I love the season when uh, Modern is just new and all there are all these new decks because we have no idea what to play around. Obviously, we know they're going to be playing Flame of Anor. Uh, counter spell, subtlety, probably Tristana's Tidebinder, all these like generic wizards, maybe even Snapcaster Mage, but it's just really sweet that you can play against a deck and just have no idea what what else they could be doing. Is there an infinite combo in here, or is it just a value engine? I have no idea. I think that makes it a lot more fun to play and also for you guys to watch. I'm sure there's like cards that people are thinking of right now as you're watching and you're like shouting that they could have one very specific card and it's just not on my radar. There's just too many cards to consider. Okay, sweet. Tarmogoyf's got that. Just too too many two mana six sevens. Uh, just pure gas. And what do we want to change in this matchup? Do we need Legion's End? I don't really think so. Uh, I don't think we want anything. I think we just run it back. Deck is gas. Let's just do it again. Yeah, Tamagoyf's that game, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's a shame we didn't have any Nethergoyfs as well, because we could have two-spelled a little bit quicker. Still got there, though. All good. And uh, maybe our breakouts can help us get something a little bit more scary. The Croxter was obviously very relevant, because it meant that we had a, a threat in the graveyard. But if we hit Tamagoyf, like, that would have been so, so much stronger, I think. Two mana for, like, a, a four-five haste. Absolutely phenomenal. So what do we got? Turn one Ragavan. Turn two Croxa or Nethergoyf. We're going to have land. Probably creature. Instant sorcery. One, two, three, four. This is going to get out of uh, Flame of Anor range pretty quick. We'll go ahead and keep. Another Ragavan, sure. So we'll go ahead and fetch here. Maybe we should be playing as... Wait, we are playing a Swamp, aren't we? We are playing a single Swamp, but I don't think our removal is in black at all. No, maybe we should add some Fatal Pushes to answer that blue uh, creature. The blue moon, dude. We also can just use things like Ragavan to get treasure tokens. Um... And also, if you just have Nethergoyfs and uh, Tamagoyfs in play, it doesn't really matter if they shut off your lands if they can't answer your uh, very big threats. Opponent's just going to go end of turn, fetch, shock, bolt the Ragavan. That's fine. Just feeding the Goyfs. So do we want to dash Ragavan or do we want to just cast a Croxa here? So let's fetch first. Um, Overgrown Tomb. Kind of want to dash Ragavan here just in case. Uh, they do have the wizard that turns everything into islands. At least we can get a treasure and then we can bolt it or, try, or tar fire it. They might just have removal, which is fine. They don't. Okay, that's really good for us. Now, the question is... Oh, that could be fun. 
Do we want to investigate every turn? No, I think that's too greedy. I think we have to keep the mana from this for um, for the three drop wizard. I think you just have to have an answer for it because otherwise we just lose, right? We just lose on the spot if we don't have a board presence and we don't have any basics that can cast our red spells. So we're going to be very conservative and keep that treasure specifically for Lightning Bolt if we can. But we've dodged it. That's uh, <laughs> very relieving. So let's go ahead, play a land, and do we just incubation here? Or I guess we've got enough things to do for now. Uh, let's lead off with a Fetch Shock. We are more of a red deck, so we'll go for Blood Crypts. And... Let's just lead off of Croxer. I'd like to keep the Nethergoyf for once it survives Flame of Anor, if possible. Because uh, obviously if we play the Ragavan first and that gets bolted, that's fine. If we play this and this gets bolted, and then later on they have a Flame, well that can kill the Ragavan, whereas it probably won't kill the Nethergoyf at some point. Okay, they discard Flare of Denial, which uh, can be quite a scary card. End of turn, Snapcaster Mage Bolt. Uh, you got to respect the uh, the Wizards deck playing Snapcaster Mage. I want to go back to like 2014 or whatever it was. There was a time where people used to play Snapcaster Mage in Zoo. Just so you could flash back a Tribal Flames or a Bolt or a Boris Charm. That is some good, honest magic right there. You should be like... Wild Nakata. I guess it wasn't even Wild Nakata at the time, was it? It was banned, I think, at that time. So it would have been like Curd Ape into... Oh, that's annoying. Um, it would have been Curd Ape into Tarmogoyf, into Tribal Flames, and then like next turn, like Snapcaster Major. We can build our Graveyard back up. That's not the end of the world. We've got Instant Sorcery and Kindred already. Opponent's down to just three cards. Oh, Breakout could be sweet. Yeah, let's do that. Wait, we only have one green source, though, for this. So we can only do one of these two. I think we want to break out. Yeah, why not? Seems like fun. Death Shadow. Yeah, that'll do. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Now, I guess, what do we want to do here? I think we just want to tar fire this right now. And then if they try and bolt this, we'll just bolt ourselves. But we'll make them make the first move. They don't. It's pretty tempting just to bolt ourselves here. But I think we're going to keep keep hold of the bolt. I do really like the fact that it answers uh, their, their three-drop wizard that makes our, all of our stuff islands. I just don't want to lose to a random three-drop creature. Like this treasure is just very valuable. Okay, sweet. Uh, Mishra's Bulb was quite a nice draw because it makes our Goyf a bit bigger. Um, I think we want to have a little peek at their deck. We're not really doing any deck manipulation our end uh, without any fetches. Let's see what you got. Counterspell on the top. Uh, let's just go ahead and, is it Incubation? Yeah, Incubation.
we find, <laughs> we find another death shadow. That's pretty good. Uh, I think we just play both of our dudes, right? Uh, I guess we swing first. And it's gotten to the point now where if we have to use the bolt on something else, our creatures are going to be big enough where we don't care too much if they play the Harbinger. Har is it Harbinger of the Seas or something? Uh, yeah, you can do that if you want. Surprised they didn't want to block the Death Shadow. Uh... I think we can do better than Death Shadow. And then we'll play Nethergoif. And yeah, so we know they've got Counter Spell. But uh, I'm going to wait wait for this to be relevant. Oh, Bronco's a great draw here. We've got Sorcery, Tribal, or Kindred, sorry, Instant, and Artifact in the graveyard. We don't even have land. Uh, or creature. So it should be very easy for this nether goyf to, to grow at this rate. The two two of the easiest creature uh, card types is creature and land to get in the bin in our deck. Opponent can't attack because obviously it makes the death shadow bigger. <laughs> we draw another nether goyf. Uh, I think we're just going to swing with just the nether goyf. I don't really want to risk the death shadow. Sure, we can bolt ourselves, but then if they counter that, it just becomes awkward. So chunk our opponent, and then let's go play another Nethergoyf, which I assume is going to need to counter spell. It's got to, right? Sure. And then we just play a Bronco. Can you answer this? Okay, sweet. I think we've got our opponent on the ropes now. They've only got three cards in hand, seven life total, and all of these threats are like must answers. We're going to get card advantage and deal loads of damage, deal loads of damage, and eventually <laughs> deal lots of damage. Uh, opponent's going for the Galvantic. That's fine. So they're going to deal two to that and get leftover one energy. And they're casting Snapcaster Mage, sure. Are they going to go Galvantic the Shadow? Uh, that's fine. Wait till they cast it. But um, they're going to go up to four energy, which is not enough to kill this if we bolt ourselves. So that is what we're going to do here. Seems a little bit counterintuitive, but it does the job. So any removal off the top is going to be really good here. Bolt or something would be really nice. And if we can make this get to six power, then it then dodges... Uh, their Flame of Anor if they have any of those. Okay, so I guess we just swing. They might double block one. So does that mean we want to shock the Watery Grave so they can't double block this? I don't think so. I think we're just going to swing with both. The only thing that they can double block is the Death Shadow. But then we can just unearth the other Nether Goyf, right? Oh, wow. They're not blocking with the Snapcaster Mage. They want to try and get some repeat value from it. Why does this have Unearth or whatever it's called? Escape. Uh, exile any number of cards from your graveyard with four or more card types among them. So one, two. Uh, oh, right, so we want to try and get is, keep as much in the graveyard as possible, right? So we don't need Lightning Bolt because we've got Tar Fire. We don't need incubation because we've got breakout. 
I guess those double up anyway. Uh, Bronco can go and break out. Yeah, that's four, right? Why is it? Except any number of cards were four. Why are we not casting it? Am I missing something? Four cards exiled so far, right? So why, why is it asking me to do more? Exile any number of cards from your graveyard with four or more card types among them, which I've now done. All right, let's try that again. I don't know if this is a bug, but I, that, that literally just said four or four selected. So one, two, three. Four. Okay, no idea what was happening there. Nevergoys are a lot smaller now, so a Flame of Anod does kill them, but if one dies, the other one just gets bigger anyway. Here's the Flame of Anod. Deal five to the Death Shadow. Maybe I should have shocked that. I think that link, it's a little bit risky though. We're only at eight now. And they can draw two. So now they can chump one, but they still can't answer the other one. Awesome. So there's only so many, only so many one mana and two mana. Big beaters our opponent can answer. So uh really, really sweet round. Um absolutely loved the Nevergoist and Tamagos in this round. Had a lot of fun. Uh let's go to round three. Alright, we won the dice roll. That is really good to see. Our opponent rolled a one and we rolled a two. You don't need to be good, you just need to be better than your opponent. Uh, well, this is very close if we had any sort of land, but we're not going to keep a no land hand. Similarly, we're not going to keep a four land hand, I don't think. Not with a one drop that we can't cast. Okay, this has got a lot of stuff going on. We'll go ahead and keep this. And we'll put back both of the fetchables. Let's have a little Mishra's Bauble action going on. And target. We might as well target our opponent. We're not doing any shenanigans with our fetch. A Darcy on top. Okay. What are we going to go for? Black, red makes sense. I don't really want to play this Nethergoyf to die. So we're just going to play the Seal of Fire and then that way this will be an X4. And obviously X4 survives Bolt, survives Harness Lightning or whatever the, the new one is. The new energy removal spell is deal three for the first one. So we're going to draw from the, wherever it is, the Bauble. And we find a Troll. Not ideal. But um, it does help us make our nether go a little bit bigger. I am very concerned that we're against Mono Red Storm again. Could really do with not being <laughs> against Mono Red Storm. Uh, we will go ahead and get an Overgrown Tomb. And are we getting it tapped here? Just on the chance that they're not and they're... I think we're going to have to get it tapped. And then we'll just play another Goyf. And then this way, if they want to bolt it, we just seal a fire something. Their face. Obviously, it would be nice if you can use seal a fire to kill a Darcy, but we've got a bolt as backup. Stomping ground. Are they red, green, storm? What is the green for? Oh, they're prowess. Well, that makes this seal of fire even better. Zero mana interaction is absolute gas. Hello, Tamagoyf. That's a pretty good draw. Let's go ahead and cycle here. Uh, what are we going to go for? I guess Overgrown Tomb as we've... No, we don't need to. We're not actually playing it this turn, are we? So let's just go ahead and get this and play it tapped. Bonker opponent here for three. And then we've got Bolt plus Seal of Fire, which is very, very hard for our opponent to 
protect through. Because obviously they can play their their slick shot, but until they pump it, it doesn't do anything. So, ah, oh, they're playing the energy package in it as well. So if you're not familiar with this card, it's two mana, uh, ETB, you get two energy, tap it, and you can exile the top card of your library, and you can play that card, in, oh, sorry, you pay two energy, uh, and you can play that card until you exile a new card with uh, this card. And whenever you cast a card from anywhere other than your hand, it deals one damage to your opponent. Bearing in mind, this includes suspended cards, so like Rift Bolt, and it also can, uh, includes foretold cards, such as uh, Slick Shot. So very cool card. Another Nether Goyf. That's pretty sweet. I think we're just gonna go ahead and play Tarmogoyf though. Be more mana efficient. And again, I just don't want to tap out. I'd rather keep up the bolt and the seal of fire. You can just die in one turn to a slick shot. So if we just keep this up and they have some protection, then we could still die. Whereas if we have Bolt, it's very unlikely to, for us to die then. Amped Raptor, sure. Oh, the hit slick shot. Oh, I didn't even notice that. It makes you deal one damage with the Raptor as well. That's pretty sweet. Uh, so they're going in with the slick shot. We're just going to go ahead and seal a fire this. Make our goifs a bit bigger. Necrogoyf and Tarmogoyf. What a great combo. Just some really sweet aggro creatures. Opponent cracks their bauble. Sure. Get a little bit of information, I guess. Oh, uh, they're probably looking... They're targeting themselves, maybe, here? Or are they targeting us? Targeting us. Okay. Wait. What could we draw where we just win here? Because if we bolt their raptor, these are only one damage of killing. So, Artifact, Instant, Enchantment. So if we draw a Sorcery, we do just kill our opponent here. Because they're tapped out. Uh, that also does it. So if we use this, kill the Raptor, and then bolt our opponent. I'm pretty sure that's... Is that lethal? I didn't even do the math. Uh, instant is not in the graveyard. So yeah, that should be lethal. Because that'll pump the Goyfs up an extra power. Sweet. Wow, this deck is actually really fun to play. Uh, what do we want to play against our opponent, though? So Slickshot is obviously quite scary, so maybe Bone Crush is pretty good. Just there's more ways to answer that. Uh, Dampening Sphere is okay, but I don't think that's really what we want to be doing. I guess it works against the Raptor reasonably well, but... Doesn't seem great. Um, I don't really want to change anything. I guess this answers the artifacts that makes them get loads of card advantage. And it answers the slick shot. Mm, it's about it. I think we just want to keep keep the main deck uh, and just get our opponent dead. I don't really want to be using like pick your poison to answer their artifact that already nets them a card. It seems like that's a losing proposition. Yeah, this hand looks good. We'll go ahead and keep. <laughs> Opponent goes turn one to one script. That's pretty good. There's the Bronco as well. Um... 
guess we just go land and pass here. We want them to pop this crypt, really. How do we do that without screwing ourselves over? I think it's fine. Let's just go ahead and play this. And we'll fetch a Blood Crypt. At some point, this Nether Goyf is going to die to something because of the, the Crypt. So we'll just play it out. If you want to bolt it, that's fine. We just need them to pop this crypt at some point. They just play a tapped land. Wow, that's crazy. So they don't have any one mana removal, or they don't want to use it on a nether goyf at least. Yeah, that's fine. We're just going to go end of turn. I just want the card back at this point. Okay, land on top of their deck. So we draw from Bauble and draw for turn. I don't really just want to keep that in, in play, you know. I'm doing nothing. Uh, let's just go Bloodstone Mire, Fetch Shock. Get a Overgrown Tomb. Now, do we want a Breakout or do we want a Bronco? I guess we could cycle this first if we're going to break out, so then Death Shadow actually works. I think we're going to go ahead and break out here. They don't have a blocker, so we can make the most of that. And there's loads of good hits we could have. Even if we hit like a Tamagoy, if it's not terrible. Uh, Croxa or Street Wraith. I guess we go for Croxa. Really would have liked a Tarmogoyf there or something. So at least we get a card from our opponent's hand here. This, uh, what did they discard? Lava Dart. Okay. Yeah, this Tormod's Crypt is annoying, but they are just essentially a card down until they can use this to stop a card. So if they can stop the Crocs, so that's pretty good in things, but if not, like we need to get them to pop it before we can use this. Okay, they're just going ahead and doing it now. And they have another one? Sure. I don't think having two of these is as good as they might think, because they're just going to run out of cards. <laughs> See, there we draw a Death Shadow. It doesn't even care that our graveyard's gone. Nor does the Bronco. So let's just go... Ooh. Do we want to pay the life just to get the Death Shadow to be an X4? Mm, I don't really want to be doing that. I'd rather keep this. So let's just go... We'll play... We're just going to play both creatures, I think. I ideally would like to keep the Death Shadow for when we're on lower life total, but I think this is fine. They're gonna they're gonna run out of removal, right, at some point. Regardless if they kill this or an X4 or whatever. Or X3. They probably have to kill the Bronco first anyway. Three mana blood moon. <laughs> sure. I don't think that's as good as they might think here, considering we have a Bronco and a Death Shadow in play. Ah, uh, that was an obvious mistake I made. Yep. But we can just keep playing Broncos. And we find a Ragavan. Uh, I think... What we want to do here is cast the Ragvan. And unfortunately, we can't uh, use the Cottage to put the Death Shadow back on top because that's a mountain. It doesn't look like one, but I assure you that is a mountain. 
Okay, slick shot, which is just absolutely terrible in this situation. This is what I mean, like too much crypt. You, you've run out of gas. You're on two cards in hand, right? And again, this is not a polluted delta. This is just a mountain, so we can't deal ourselves damage with it if we wanted to. Uh, I think we're just going to swing and risk taking lots of damage. I, the other option is to uh, to saddle one with the other two. Seems a little bit overly cautious, though. I think we just want to get our opponent dead. Mutagenic growth, sure. Well, now I'm even more sold on just taking the damage from both. We can draw two cards and we'll trade something in with a with a slick shot. I don't think we really care too much. Okay, sweet. We managed to not die. <laughs> Wait, is our opponent just going to take it and try, try and kill us on the swing back? That is wild if that's what they're, they're going to try and do. We are on seven, so I guess it is possible depending on their hand. Um, so do we want Tamagoy for Breakout now? What can we hit with Breakout that helps here? I can't think of anything. Um, we don't have anything in our deck with Reach, right? No. Oh, we could hit Croxer? Have we already gone through Croxer? Yeah, we've already gone through Croxer. Very undecided on what to do. I don't think it makes too much of a difference. So if that's the case, we'll play the one without haste. And then next turn we can... I guess we can't even break out next turn because we don't have a second treasure. You got two cards, opponent. Can you kill us with two cards? Uh, that's a good start. So you need another instant or sorcery here. Or non-creature, I guess. Oh, so they must have a bolt or something here. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe I just shouldn't have risked it and just saddled one. Huh. Yeah. Fair play to our opponent. I guess I just got too greedy. The Blood Moon was a, a bit annoying, I guess. So maybe we do bring in Pick Your Poison. Um... And Bone Crusher is good against Blood Moon as well. I don't think we need Legion's End. I think that's a bit over the top. Maybe we don't need three Pick Your Poison. That does seem a bit overkill. Uh, we can cut the Traverse. I don't think we need to be doing that. Uh, Croxa doesn't seem great in this matchup. And what else? We can just cut the incubations as well. Oh, they are one of our very few. No, we've got we've brought in more sorceries. We've got quite a few instances. What is this in the graveyard? Is this two? Is this creature and instant? I guess we'll just find out. I uh, definitely want to go first. Oh, if we kept traversing, you can traverse for Bone Crusher Giant. Um, super land heavy hand. But we do have kind of two spells there. Sure, we'll go ahead and keep. I think the reason that we want to keep this is because we've got a rag van, so if that goes unchecked, it's very good. And also we've got an adventure card, which is really handy. Uh, let's just go fetch shock. Play the mythic monkey and uh, make sure that make them have it. 
Make sure them ha they have at least one removal spell or they are probably just dead to the Ragvan. Because anything they play on turn one is just going to get stomped. So you better have an answer. I'd be very surprised if they didn't have an answer. They've got Bolt, uh, Lava Dart. There's so many things they can use. Yep. Oh, Nethergoyf is a nice draw. So we can just go play this and play the Nethergoyf. Again, it dies to Bolt and stuff, but there's only so long you can not play your cards for, especially when you don't have many cards to play. The Bone Crusher is a little bit awkward if they don't play a threat because then it's kind of just stranded. Uh, Darcy, sure. And then Bauble, a little bit of surveil action here. Creature, instant, and artifact already in the bin here. Oh, they kept a one lander, okay. Uh, we're gonna go for a blood crypt here because we've already got an overgrown tomb in hand. And we draw a Bronco, which is pretty nice. Yeah, we just got to stomp this, right? I guess if they have mutagenic growth, that's a little bit awkward. Because then it goes to... No, it still won't be that big. We'll swing first, because they might want to block and then mutagenic and see. I don't think they will do that. That seems very risky. Cool. So... We're just going to stomp this because uh, we want to make sure they keep missing their land drops if we can afford them to. So they're going to crack the bauble here. They can't really afford to sack their land for the lava dart. I guess that would then take uh, instant out of their graveyard anyway, so that wouldn't work. Uh, we just played this tapped. Oh, I did not mean to shock that, but okay. Maybe we'll draw a death shadow, and that was very important. <laughs> Or maybe I just misclicked. Okay, second land online. Another Darcy, sure. This one is a 3-3. Three, three. Street Wraith doesn't really help us, so let's just cycle that now. And we draw a Tarmogoyf. Okay, that's a big old fella. Um, is there anything we want to redraw? Not yet with the Witch's Cottage, so I think we're just going to go fetch a basic so we can play around Blood Moon. Seems like a good option. And I think we're just going to play both of our two drops. So green and anything. Play Tamagoyf, who is a big old fella here, 4-5 for 2 mana. And our card advantage machine slash suicide machine, Caust uh, Caustic Bronco. What are you going to do? Bow the Nethergoyf. Sure. So next time we can play the Bone Crusher, saddle the Bronco, and just hit our opponent for a load of damage. We are under the quite a bit of a clock though, because they're hitting us for three in the air every time. I've accidentally shocked once, and our mana base is just naturally very painful. So this is the card advantage machine that we're slightly worried of. It does take a lot of energy. So a lot of the time it might not actually net them any cards. Oh, they're for sure going to play this here, right? Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to ping us for one. All 
Right, so we're going to take three in the air here. We are very close to dying. Oh, the Street Wraith also did quite a lot of damage. Maybe we've just done ourselves too much damage this game. Breakout is a good draw. So we can put the Nethergoyf on top of our deck if we want to with the Cottage and then Breakout. So we guaranteed to hit it. But I think I just want to break out and see what we can find. Yeah. Tamagoyf, Nethergoyf, and a Ragavan. Nice. Let's go ahead and take that Tamagoyf. Definitely want to put it into play. And... Yeah, we are just dead if they don't block. We can put Street Wraith on top of our deck. Then cast the Bone Crusher. Crew the Bronco. And then that's... What? 5, 10, 15 damage. So they have to block something. Yeah, looks like that's our only play. So we'll go play Witch's Cottage. Uh, Street Wraith goes on top. It is a dead draw, but it does the most damage. So then you cast Bone Crusher Giant. You saddle it with the Giant, which I assume doesn't trigger the... No, it doesn't make us take damage. Good. And now they have to block a Tarmogoyf or they're dead. So we get in for a huge chunk of damage. So we could still die here, but we are very, very close to killing our opponent. They're going to need like a bolt and I guess bolt and lava dart does it. What have you got? Another amulet. Okay. So now their lava dart does three damage. One from itself, one from here, one from here. So hopefully they don't have a bolt. They have Lava Dart. That's, I think, lethal, right? Looks like it. Yeah, if I didn't uh, shock earlier by accident, I think we would live, right? Three, six, no. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, we'd still die. Okay, that makes me feel better. I assume they see the line of the the amulet makes it the lava dart still three. Okay, so kill the bronco. Because this says whenever a point, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, so lava dart does deal three because it comes from your graveyard. These both trigger. Tormont's crypt. I guess they just didn't see it. Or they just are enjoying going off. Okay, there we go. They've, they've finally used the Lava Dart. That's all I needed to see. Well played to our opponent. Oh, that was so close. If I didn't misclick on that... Uh, on that shock that would have helped a little bit but it, it turns out they had more than sufficient damage um and game two i definitely misplayed by getting greedy with the broncos i just couldn't resist i think i need to play with this card more and get it all out of my system that i don't need to just draw all the cards even if it costs me the life if i just saddled it and attacked with one i think we could have won game two anyway but uh yeah that was a, a lot of fun really enjoying this deck let's go on to round four uh we won the dice throw Awesome to see. And this hand looks gas. We'll go ahead and keep a very exposed turn one nethergoyf, but it will grow quick. Especially with the seal of fire in our hand. Uh, we'll lead off with a blood crypts. 
play the nether goyf. If someone tries to unholy heat it, we can just cycle street race. So I will leave um leave our opponent the opportunity to misplay. I guess it wouldn't be a misplay just to get caught out. What we are against this time. Is this burn? Please don't be burn. Burn is probably quite rough against a deck that has full street wraith. Well, I still don't know if this is burn or not. Um, well, this dies regardless. That's fine. Okay, so we'll go Delta, Fetch Shock. We're still going to have to Fetch Shock to cast this breakout. Uh, I'm not going to play that slowly just in case we're against burn. If you can get a huge creature and play, that's normally the best way to beat burn, other than life gain, of course. But game one, if you just put a huge dude into play. Uh, Never Goyce only a 2-3. Bronco would take damage, which I'm quite worried about. Or we just go Ragavan. Ragavan or Nether Goyf. Uh, this is about to become bigger because a sorcery is going to go in the graveyard. Yeah, let's just go for the Nether Goyf. Oh wow, definitely paid off for using that, finally using the Street Wraith. Uh, let's have a little peek and see what our opponent is actually doing. Okay, so it probably, I guess the Bolt, being specifically Bolt doesn't tell us that it's um, Burn, but if that was like a Lava Spike or a Rift Bolt, obviously that would be a big giveaway. Okay, Bronco's a nice draw. Surely this is Burn. Oh, maybe not. I know some burn play, some burn players do like to play Darcy in their deck. Just as a a very quick creature that flies. Helps you get rid of some lands. Where's this bolt going? To face, of course. is just having a real good think about the top card of their deck. Not sure what it could be that makes them think that hard. Okay, what do we want to do here? We probably need to kill this, right? They've only got instant in their graveyard at the moment. They don't even have land. But Seal of Fire also will make it bigger. Or we can play the Bronco and then set up for the Troll with the Witch's Cottage. That seems pretty good. Yeah. Oh, it's just if they can flip this, we just die, right? Not flip this, enable this. Two bolts to the face and a Darcy is very, very quickly going to kill us. Um... So yeah, the, the two options are Seal of Fire, kill this, and cycle the troll. Or the other option is play the Bronco. So next turn, we can saddle it, uh, which is Cottage, this back on top, and hit our opponent for six, which will probably kill them. But it leaves us exposed. I think we're going to play the Seal of Fire. Because they also could just not be burned, right? We've only seen lightning bolts. Um, this does give them more time, unfortunately, but couldn't really think i don't know just leaving the darcy there so that if they can enable delirium we just die it did not sit right with me but in yeah so like now they would have had artifact plus a surveil all they'd need to do is get a land and something in their graveyard and we would have just probably just died
I don't think they're burn. I think that they're prowess. So they draw from their bauble, and <laughs> we draw a dead card. Um, so I guess we swing for five. Uh, we'll pay two for the Bronco. And we'll play the land tapped. Okay, opponent, you have exactly one turn to kill us. If they present lethal, then... Ooh, they are burned. I was going to say, if they, like, played a... Uh, slick shot and they made it like have loads of power we could always cycle this and hope to draw removal um, if we know that we're going to die regardless but how did they not kill us and they have left the game I think our opponent just rage quit so no it says on here they have left uh, Smurfy leads the game and then it says the opponent has left the game so I don't really know what just happened we're going to board these in, take out all the Street Wraiths. Uh, and I don't know, know what else to bring in, I guess. Oh no, they might bring in Blood Moon. No, they're playing Boris Charm, I don't think they will. We'll just bring in some removal. Why does it say our opponents left the game? That's strange. Uh... It's a bit of a weird hand. No removal. No way to crew our own Broncos. I think this hand might be too slow. Okay. Much prefer this. Uh, what are we putting back? I guess one of the fetches. Opponent just leads off with a fetch and passes. We draw on both of our Traverse. Shame we don't have a, a one of in our sideboard that has lifelink or something. Maybe that's something to consider. Opponent just goes end of turn, fetches. There's some weird hybrid of burn and prowess by the look of it. Like, are they playing Slick Shot Show Off? I, I can't really tell. I don't think they're playing Blood Moon though. They're playing way too many red white lands. For Boris Charm, Lightning Helix, I presume. So yeah, there's a slick shot. Why are you playing Boris Charm and Slick Shot? Very bizarre. And what do we want to do here? I guess we just play the swamp and keep up tar fire. And then that gets out of bolt range. So with a bit of luck, our opponent might try and bolt this. Even better if they play their slick shot first to get like the prowess trigger. So they're going for the fetch. Sweet choice in mountain. Wait, is what I just called ex exactly going to happen? So now bolt our nether to to pump your swift uh, your slick shot. Seal of fire. Sure. You're gonna use that on our nether goyf? This is a very interesting like. Uh, dance of like do they want to use their seal of fire and then we pump our goif 
Are they going to the dome? Targeting us. Yeah, sure. You can tell us too with your sail of fire. Uh, opponent is shocking us at this point. Ah, they do it for the skewer. Sure. And they pass our creature. Well, we'll kill the uh, select shot. Assuming they don't have mutagenic growth. Okay, good. If they had mutagenic growth, I think that would be just game at this point. Uh, we don't have another basic to fetch, do we? We do not. That's fine. We are land instant. Okay, so we can cast the first traverse, which does nothing. But then the second one is then active. So if we don't draw any way to enable delirium, we can do that if we need to. But never mind, good deck building just means we don't even need to worry about it. Opponent in the tank. Do they want to let us resolve a seal of fire? Don't really get a choice. So we're just going to go seal of fire, dome the opponent, uh, shock, traverse. And what are we going to get? Death Shadow or Death Shadow could be sweet because then it makes our opponent scared to deal damage to us. How big is Nethergoyf? Four five. I think with the first one we'll get Nethergoyf. The second one we might get. Uh, a Death Shadow, we'll see how the game goes. Because obviously Death Shadow means it's very hard for them to interact and deal damage to us because then we kill them quicker. But also, what if they just sandbag all their spells and kill us? Because if we just played a Death Shadow here, it'd be a 1-1 one -one and then they could, they'd could they have a lot of time. So I think the first one, we need, it needs to be a good clock. Uh, that seems like a good draw. We'll go ahead and dash. So our opponent is probably going to have to use something on this Ragavan here. If not, we do call them in two turns. And if it hits, we also get an extra mana so we can cast a one drop from this Traverse. Deflecting Balm. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. What do we get? We get a Boris Sham. Uh, we'll play a land and traverse. What are we going to traverse for? Do we just get Bone Crusher Giant here? Five, six, seven. Because if we uh, if we get Bone Crusher, then we can kill a Slick Shot. I think that's a bit too niche, though. Maybe we just get another Nether Goyf. Yeah, we'll just get another Goyf and, and present Lethal. So if you're unfamiliar with Deflecting Palm, um, it says the next time a source of your choice would deal combat damage, uh, sorry, would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. If the damage is prevented, deal that damage to its controller. So if we attack with two Nether Glyphs, only one of them will hit and the other one hits us and that can cause a draw. This is not like a ability that goes on the stack. Um, so if you hit them and they're on five with two five fives and you're on five, it's a draw. Uh, it also means that because the deflecting palm deals the damage, if a infect creature hits you and you deflecting palm it, you don't deal infect damage, you deal normal damage because it's deflecting palm dealing the damage and deflecting palm does not have infect. Uh, yeah, really, really big fan of this card. I've cast this hundreds and hundreds of times because I played burn for like a decade straight. Uh, in competitive magic and deflecting palm is also really nice because it doesn't target so you can target hexproof creatures um, 
and it doesn't do anything. Didn't really need to see that land there. I guess we could have gone upkeep, fetch a uh, Witch's Cottage, but then going to six. Six is a very dangerous number in modern with lightning bolts. Oh, there's nothing to even Witch's Cottage for. There's literally no creatures in our graveyard, so. Oh, Searing Blaze is quite nice here. Oh no, it only does one. <laughs> they didn't have the land. They didn't have landfall, so Searing Blaze only does one. And they just die? I don't think they realized that they just gave our Never Ghost bit a little bit more power. Okay. <laughs> that was a really funny way to win. Um Exactsies to our opponent. Not really sure what they're doing. They're like half prowess, half burn. Um, but yeah, deck has been an absolute blast. Uh, let's finish off the league with the last game. All right, sweet. On the play, where we belong in our aggro deck. What do we got? Turn one Ragavan. A crap load of ways to get stuff in the bin. We'll go ahead and keep. We don't have a green source yet. Um, but I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. We've got Ragavan, maybe. Uh, we've got the Mishra's Bauble to help, dress, help us draw as well. You could play Stomping Ground in this deck, but I really like the Witch's Cottage tech, so you can Swamp Cycle for uh, Witch's Cottage and then put a creature on top of your deck. I think that's really powerful, especially with the Bronco and with Fetches. I think it's worth just playing a almost a mono black deck or mono black uh, mana base. Uh, just straight away we'll go for a Blood Crypt and Shock. We'll just cast this bauble just to make sure that there's nothing crazy we have to worry about. Persist. Okay. That is quite scary. So that means we could be against like Creativity or that like Yorgma, not Yorgma, sorry. Um... There's like some five color shenanigans deck that you can also play, or like four colors. Gorio's Vengeance, that's it. I always, whenever I think of Gorio, I think of Yorgmoth for some reason. Uh, that to me suggests some Gorio's deck, not not creativity, because that's not a mountain. What do we want to do here? I guess we just cycle this, get a green source, and cast this. Uh, actually, no, we'll hit them first, because then we can use the the treasure to cast this. And then we might find a good two-drop that we want to cast. And then we can just fix our mana base the next turn. Leyline Binding, that's pretty sweet. Uh, let's use this for green and incubation. Find something juicy. Uh, we'll take a Bronco. Bronco is pretty sweet. So what are they persisting? Uh, I would assume it's going to be... What is it called? Uh, Archon of Cruelty? Yeah. Probably just plays another tapped land. They do have binding mana up now, right? Abzan, and then they're just missing blue red, which is it. Yeah, so they've got they've got enough mana to do that. I think we are one mana short of doing the cottage shenanigans, so we'll just play the Nether Goyf. Leyline Binding, the Bronco in response. Sure. That's pretty good. And... I guess we just... Oh, no, no, no. Let's swing first. Maybe we hit something off the Ragavan. I doubt it, but we'll see what we hit. Maybe a Thoughtseize. Uh, I'm sorry, what is our opponent doing? Sure. Chancer of the Annex. Uh, if you're not familiar with this cycle of creatures, they all look, 
begin with chancellor and then they all do something if they, if they're in your opening hand the white one is counter is essentially a mana tithe you counter their first spell the green one is you get a uh, a green mana during your first main phase of the first turn the red one is like you get a one one with haste and the black one is you deal three damage to your opponent you gain three uh and then the blue one i think is like you look at your opponent's hand or something I don't think I've ever really seen the blue one played. And the blue one is not the counter spell, which is very strange. Um, yeah, so I guess we just go cycle. Uh, finally get our green source. Uh, we'll just pass the turn. So a very strange card our opponent is deciding to reanimate. I assume that's not the primary. Not really sure why you would be trying to reanimate that. <laughs> Our opponent is playing five color domain, uh, like persist shenanigans. So you discard your big fatties with the Kavu. Really, as, as a zoo player, I can appreciate that. Uh, sure, let's just go ahead and cycle the Street Wraith first, see what we can find. Uh, okay, alright. Bit deja vu, we'll try that again. Seal of Fire. Um, I think we just kill the Kavu, right? So, bolt it. Oh, do they run stubborn denial as well? Their deck is an absolute pile if they're playing <laughs> if they're playing stubborn denial in their deck, then yeah. Wild. Our opponent is absolutely wild. Um So we can just swing with both. And then that way they might not block because they're scared of another bolt. And if they don't we get to hit them. Interesting. Uh, I don't think they're going to block. They might just not want to risk their Kavu dying. Because we know they've got a persistent hand. Uh, so I'm going to risk it. The downside is we lose our Ragavan. The upside is we might get heavily rewarded. Okay, that's fine. We knew the risk. And we'll pass the turn. Maybe I should have played the cottage and put something on top. I'm not sure. We'll find out. So we're going to take five here. Big old chunk of damage. The question is, what are they persisting? That's ultimately what this comes down. It is just an annex. <laughs> sure. An annex is actually smaller than our nether goif. Especially with the persist counter on actually, yeah. So whenever an opponent casts a spell, counter it unless they pay one. Oh, it's not just the first spell. Okay, it's just a, it's just essentially a Thalia against us, but also works on creatures. And now they're fetching. What are they? What else have they got? A basic forest. How on earth are they getting domain with this? <laughs> uh, sure. So white is going to be vigilance. I don't think that matters. Um, sure. Not really sure what what we need to do here. Um, I guess if we swing and they just don't block, we kill them. Uh, so let's just go seal of fire, pay the one. And sure, we'll play this. I think we just swing, right? We're dead on the crack back. If 
they don't block, we just go tar fire the face, seal of fire the face. This becomes bigger. And yeah, we are dead. I think that double street wraith really hurt us. Um, the more I play the street wraith, the more I think it's just not good enough anymore. So what do we want to change? I guess we bring in the pick your poisons. It answers the Draco, it answers the reanimation target, and it also answers Leyline Binding. I guess we cut Croxer against a reanimated deck, that seems a bit risky. And I don't mind cutting Street Wraiths. I think that's about it. You could bring in Legion's End to answer Tom, uh, Carvus, but I think that's the only thing that we're going to be able to exile. So I don't really want to use that just for Carvu. We don't have any graveyard hate. Maybe that is an oversight. Is there any good graveyard hate? I, like scavenging ooze is fine. This deck has taken a lot longer to do a league with than the last two decks I think I've played. I think this has been like a two hour league, whereas some of the other ones felt like an hour and a half or something. And this is, I think might just be like two and a half at this point. I should be able to edit it down a little bit just by taking out bits and bobs here and there. We definitely need to go on the play. What do we got? A nether goif into breakout. Yeah, we'll keep this. The more I play with breakout in this deck, the more I think it might just be a four of. Uh, Blood Crypt to begin with is fine. Play a little 1 2. So, if our opponent has the turn 2 Draco, that might be a bit of a problem. We don't have a Pick Your Poison just yet. Uh, yeah, so Delta into Overgrown Tomb. And shock, green, red, breakout. Makes the nether growth a little bit bigger. And hopefully we're going to find something good with this. <laughs> of course our opponent's stubborn denounce it. We still have a slightly bigger nether growth here. And we'll just pass the turn back. Is nether growth just good enough for the main zoo now? It might, it's getting close, I think. I don't know how much you'd have to build the deck to accommodate for it. You probably play baubles and stuff. Yeah. Okay, there's the Kavu. We can kill that, fortunately. And that's going to make our nether growth a lot bigger, actually. And we have the answer to pick your poison. That's huge. So they're going to have to start fetch shocking or take a turn off. So we'll go this, fetch shock, get a blood crypt. And shock. Play the seal of fire. Play the bolt. And choose enchantment. <clears throat> yeah, that was absolutely huge that turn. The power of all these one mana spells. <laughs> you just managed to do a lot of things and also get the nether goyf a bit bigger. Clear the way. Now our opponent's mana is just kind of screwed up. They're going to have to either fetch shock or get a bunch of triomes, which either obviously are good for us. A basic island and... A basic swamp. Yeah, their mana is just screwed here. Well, they can do like persist a kavu. Oh, okay, sure. Play the Indantha Triome and a Psychic Frog, sure. Uh, so whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put uh, draw a card 
or a Planeswalker, draw a card, discard a card, put one one counter on it, and exile three cards from your graveyard to give it flying. Bronco off the top is pretty nice. Uh, do we want to save this for the incongruity? Possibly. We don't have a blue source at the moment. I think we just cast it for incubation. Nethergoyf or Death Shadow. A 4-5 or a 2-2. Two two. I guess we go for the Nethergoyf for now. And we're going to play the Bronco. Wait, how many cards do they have to discard to make this? Oh, they'd basically have to just... Yeah, they'd have to discard their hand. So, free attack here, I think. So, these are the two discard outlets. Four Psychic Frog, four Kavu for the uh, their two drops to enable um, Persist. They've not even got anything to reanimate yet, so they need to have Persist plus a reanimate uh, target in their hand. Steam Vents. So Domain is back online between the Triome and the Shock. <laughs> they are also playing Breakout. Our opponent has got some serious brewing going on here. So they're basically playing like the old, uh, oh, they actually might have it here. They're playing like the old Kavi reanimator deck, but you get Psychic Frog as another creature, and now they're going to discard the Chancellor and then reanimate the Chancellor. If they played like good reanimate threats, I would be a lot more intimidated, but they're just discarding Chaff. Like a 6-7 is obviously very powerful, but... I mean, if it was a an Archon of Cruelty, I think the game would just be over. But they don't... Oh, they don't have to persist. Okay. And now we should just be able to kill them on the crack back. Yeah. Okay. What a wild ride that was. Uh, what do we want to change? I guess we want the Legion's End because their two drops are their uh, discarding outlets. And what do we cut? Two more, no, I think you need a couple of Street Wraiths in the deck. Especially now that we've seen what their deck is, the Kavu is not really a beta, it's kind of like a side plan. So maybe we bring those in, cut a pair of Traverse and Yeah, we'll, we'll run that. I wonder if the Psychic Frog we can play in some sort of madness deck. That seems pretty sweet. Oh, this hand just doesn't do anything. We are getting a lot of hands with a lot of lands, considering we're only playing, like, what, 18? 18, four baubles, two trolls. Yeah, so Mulligan, and oh, this is also so slow. I think we're going to go to five. I don't think I can keep this on the draw. Okay, the same hand with less lands. Brilliant. Um, one, two, go back. Opponent just leads off with a Triome. Okay, so our opponent's mulliganed as well, which makes us feel a little bit better. But yeah, this is a very slow opening hand for our deck. Wonderful top deck. Really, really nice off the top. Opponent is fetching. What are they going to be up to? Probably get the other Triome to go with their full domain. No, they've got a two drop to play. 
There's the Kavu. Okay. So we need to kill this quick, really. Seal of Fire is not going to get it done. Uh, we'll play the Delta. We'll go get a Overgrown Tomb. And what are we playing here? Bronco or Goif? Even if we double block, this doesn't answer it. So I guess we play the Tarmogoyf because it's going to get... No. We'll play the Bronco. I think we want to play the Bronco first and just try and find some more cards. We can crew it uh, next turn, I believe, because uh, we're going to be able to at least put an enchantment into the graveyard. Oh, yeah, we, maybe we won't be able to crew it unless we crew with both creatures. Well, there's the Chancellor. In fact, if we block here... That's then creature, land, enchantment, which will then mean our Tarmogoyf is... Oh no, Tarmogoyf counts their creature, so maybe we don't take the, the trade. Well, it's not even a trade, it's just a chump. Now we're going to block here. If we take five damage, we're dead so quickly to this flyer. So if they have the persist, we just don't have enough time to find it. And also if they reanimate this, then Kavu, uh, Goif becomes smaller and then can't crew the Bronco. So it would just be a cascading effect, I think. Uh, so we're going to have to go land, fetch, at this point, I guess we just go Swamp. And play Goif, pay the one. And do we just crew and swing? These don't have Vigilance. Yeah, I think we're just going to... Oh no, then we just die to the Kavu as well. Okay, I guess we just pass. We need to find an answer to this Chancellor, but I mean, like, if they had just played any any reasonably good reanimate threat, we would be in such trouble. Uh, but really like really like the idea from our opponent adding the Psychic Frog, because it used to be where you played Persist with Kavu, that there was like a nice little side game plan, but with only four Kavus and four Persists, it was like, does it actually line up? Is it actually going to line up that much? But now you've got four Psychic Frog as a discard outlet, it's much, much better. Oh, nice. They chose to get rid of our Ragavan to make our Tarmogoyf smaller. Uh, I think we're just dead. The Mulligan has been really rough. If we Maybe we should be playing Fatal Push as well in our deck somewhere. For creatures like Kavu. Um... We'll buy ourselves as much time as we can. What could we answer this with in our deck? I guess just a bolt off the top and then just double spell it. Psychic Frog as well, sure. Bloodstone Mire is not going to help us, and I think we can read between the lines and see that we're dead here. So what, I can seal a fire, kill this. Then Carvio has to jump here. We take four, and then there's there's no way we recover. If we tar fire, sorry, if we seal a fire this, they can discard a card and make it bigger. Uh, we are just dead. So well played to our opponent. Really liked their brew. Uh, let's just head over back to the deck, and I'll run through what I found and... Uh, give you some thoughts on the deck. So there you have it guys. Uh, I don't know really what to call this other than like eight Tarmogoyf Jund mid-range aggro uh, in modern with the new Modern Horizons 3 cards. I had an absolute blast playing it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the content. Uh, if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. 
In regards to what I would change with the deck, I think Traverse is fine in the deck, but Incubation is just much better because it enables Delirium and makes your uh, Goyfs in that bigger quicker. But it also has the upside of the Incongruity, which I think could come up with the limited removal in the deck. That is the one thing I think I do need to take into consideration is I think Fatal Push is just a very powerful card. We should probably be playing some number in the main deck. Uh, Lightning Bolt is what is great. The fact that it goes face is obviously very powerful, particularly in such an aggressive version of the, the deck. But it doesn't kill Carvus, and there are some other creatures where it's just a little bit iffy. So uh, like Mutagenic Growth against Prowess can, can get a little bit difficult. So I think some Fatal Pushes would go a long way. Uh, other than that, I would like to see the fourth breakout. This card was absolutely fantastic when we had it. Um, the, what do you call this? Agadim's Awakening did not come up a single time. Not even close. I don't think that's necessary. But again, it's a very small cost because we already are playing a bunch of pain lands that we're happy to shock for, for Death Shadow. Um, so I don't think there's much cost to this. It just didn't come up, so I don't know how realistic that is. Uh, and then the Witch's Cottage, again, didn't really do anything for us. So maybe we would just be better off with a slightly less painful mana base. That way we could play like a basic forest, a basic mountain, uh, and then not die to burn and things like that. Uh, I think that's about it. Death Shadow, you could you could probably play four. I think if you play four, you may want to add some Thoughtseize to the deck just to get it down quicker. Um, but yeah, absolutely love the deck. Really, really fun. Loving Nethergoyf. There is uh, definitely going to be some more decks in the future that we're going to be playing with Nethergoyf. It's a lot of fun. Um, I think that's it for the main deck. Sideboard uh, was... It was fine. I think we need more answers to the Storm deck because the deck just loses to the Mono Red Storm deck. Force Viz is really nice, but maybe some Artifact and Enchantment Hate uh, other than Pick Your Poison. Pick Your Poison being Sorcery Speed means that they can sandbag their, uh, their Ruby Medallion and then wait until turn 4, then cast the Ruby Medallion and combo off in the same turn. Or even turn three, they can do it. But if they play out on turn two, pick your poison's great. But any competent player uh, will probably sandbag it, I think, at this point when they know that everyone's playing pick your poison until the metagame is adapted to where people are playing things like Besage you again and things like that. But pick your poison seems to be uh, a bit of a mainstay in, in modern. So I think that does leave um, the mono red storm players a little bit of room to misplay if they don't sandbag their ruby. Uh, I haven't seen any Yorgmoth on Modo. I still think Yorgmoth is going to be one of the best decks. It's hard to imagine that the best deck before the new set didn't get better when they got like five new cards to try out. So Legion's End didn't feel very necessary today, but I can see, especially in paper, when people are playing like their best decks, uh, Yorgmoth is probably going to be a lot more popular in paper. If that's the case, I really like Legion's uh, End. And Tunnel Inglis, Tunnel Inglis Ignis. Is only good against Nardu, really, and Amulet. Uh, we didn't play any of them, so it looked awful. But if you do play against them, it looks great. So it's, uh, it is what it is. Particularly if we're playing four breakouts and four incubation, I can definitely be, uh, be persuaded to play more cards like this where they're just powerful, cyborg hateful creatures that you can try and find a lot more consistent, uh, consistently. So maybe you cut one of these and you play some other types of cards, like you play... I don't know, maybe even like a Thalia or an equivalent of Thalia to help uh, combat all the Storm decks because then you can just find it more consistently. Dampening Sphere, it's very hard to just happen to draw it. But with 4 Incubation, 4 Breakout, you could easily find some creatures uh, that are hating against Storm and then just consistently tutor them out. So yeah, that is the deck. If you enjoyed the content, as I said, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, my last video got like 3000 views in the first day, which is wild considering my subscriber count is like 490 or like, yeah, it's just under 500. So uh, I just like to say a massive thank you for everyone that's been watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the last video and that's why you're on this one, um, uh, then I hope you enjoy the content and hopefully you'll stick around. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Peace.